Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here. I am back again today doing another video. The subject of today's video is going to be a continuation of a short series that I've been doing, which is basically highlighting some of my favorite seasons in NBA history, just to, uh, you know, go back and cover why I'm doing this series really quick. I think that there are certain seasons in the NBA's history that are more interesting than others. Uh, so, like, an example of this is, I think, when the Cavs beat the Warriors in the 2016 Finals, that was a much more entertaining season because, uh, like, versus the next season, or 2017-18 with Durant, it was basically like a, a foregone conclusion that the Warriors are going to win the Finals, but that 2015-16 season, the Warriors had gone on this amazing run of being 73-9 in the regular season, and people wanted to see if they'd be able to finish it off and be the greatest team in regular season history. So there was a lot uh, surrounding them and th them chasing that 73 win mark that season and then seeing if they could go on to win the finals. And then uh, just some others, like that's one example. But so the purpose of this is to just highlight some of my favorite seasons and talk about why they are my favorite seasons in NBA history. Basically, from the time that I've started consistently watching the NBA to present, which is roughly like 2000, early 2000s. So, the season that I'm highlighting today is the 2005 to 6 season. This was sort of an odd season as far as some of the standings. Okay, so to discuss quick, in the East, you had Detroit, who led the NBA in wins with 64, then Miami second with 52, then New Jersey three with 49, and then fourth, you had Cleveland with 50, which is interesting that Cleveland actually had more wins than New Jersey, but because of the rule that the division winners are the top three seeds, uh, New Jersey got to be above Cleveland in the seeding of the conference. Then the rest of the East fell off quite a bit, I'd say. Uh, Washington had 42 wins. Indiana and Chicago had 41. And then Milwaukee was the eight seed with 40 wins. And then in the West, uh, so your seedings for the top eight teams were San Antonio led the West with 63 wins. The second seed was Phoenix with 54. The three seed was Denver with 42 wins. And then you had the four seed, uh, with 60 wins being Dallas. So this is extremely odd. You had Dallas, who had 60 wins that year, lower than a 54-win Suns team and a 44-win Denver Nuggets team. But the reason that each of those teams are higher is because they won their respective divisions. But as I say, between, I think it was a couple of years ago, they did away with that rule where like the division winners are the top three seeds because they just thought the team with the best record should be higher. Okay, but... Anyway, we had a, a four seed being a 60-win team in Dallas. The five was Memphis with 49 wins. Then you had the Clippers at six with 47. The Lakers at the seventh seed with 45 wins. And then Sacramento at 44 as the eighth seed. As far as storylines, you had uh, Shaq and Dwayne Wade trying to win an NBA championship because Shaq had gone down injured in the previous season in the Eastern Conference Finals. So they were sort of on a revenge tour the Spurs were looking to go back to back the Mavericks were looking to improve upon their previous disappointing seasons Phoenix was trying to improve and they still had most of their core from the 60 win team or 62 win team the previous season so they were still a contender Denver was finally coming up and becoming more of a serious threat with Carmelo coming into his prime more Cleveland made the playoffs the first time with LeBron James as a 50 win team the Nets were still a presence with uh, Jason Kidd, Vince Carter, and Richard Jefferson as a threat in the East. Uh, you had Washington. I think this is the highest seed that they ever were during the Gilbert Arenas era as the five seed. Um, so you had a lot of interesting different storylines. The Clippers actually made the playoffs for once. Uh, this is back before the Chris Paul, Blake Griffin era when the Clippers were not much at all. And Elton Brand led them out of the ashes of... Uh, obscurity and irrelevance to be a 47 win playoff team and then you had the Lakers making the playoffs for the first time in the post Shaq era and the Kings actually still holding on without Chris Webber anymore and I think without Paige Stojakovic as well they were led by primarily Mike Bibby and a few role players basically but the team the team wasn't all that good to be in the playoffs at this point they did have Ron Artest though I believe he was off of the Pacers by this point and on to the Kings 
Um, but yeah, the team wasn't all that great, uh, but they still squeaked into the playoffs. Okay, so as for the playoffs, they were uh, pretty interesting this year. Uh, so you had Detroit beating Milwaukee pretty easily. But you had a, a few series in the first round that were somewhat close. You had Cleveland and Washington go to six games. Same with New Jersey and Indiana, and same with Miami and Chicago. And now I personally consider a series that goes to six or seven games to be a competitive series, like a somewhat close competitive series. So it, three in the Western Conference did that. And then you had San Antonio and Sacramento go to six games in the West. And you had Phoenix and L.A. go to seven games in the West in the first round, which is pretty entertaining. So that's a pretty good first round. As for the second round, you had Detroit and Cleveland go seven games, which is pretty good. And then the West, you had Dallas and San Antonio go seven games. And then Phoenix and Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Clippers go seven games. Oh, yeah, uh, the Clippers upset Denver in the first round. They had more wins than them during the regular season, so that kind of makes sense. But it's kind of cool to see a sixth seed go to the second round. And then as for the conference finals and the finals, each of those series in the East and the West and in the finals all went six games. So collectively, you had quite a few series going to six or seven games in the let's see here one two three four five six seven there's seven series between the second round the conference finals and the finals and six out of those seven were six games or longer which means they were at least somewhat com they were competitive in my book so that's pretty good uh, there's lots of there's lots of different teams that could have gone really far in my opinion in the west i'd say the contenders were basically the spurs phoenix and dallas and then in the East, I think you'd say they were Detroit, Miami, New Jersey, and Cleveland. That any of those four could have probably made it out of the East. Uh, that being said, um, I thought this was a really good year as far as competition. And there, at least being some parity, at least more than there is today, where you basically know for sure who's going to win the title. And I've referenced it in some of these previous videos for this series, but that's really one of the things that determines to me like a good, se a good season and a good playoffs is having a sense of not really knowing who's going to win the title or get to the finals, I think that's really cool. Not necessarily total parity where every team needs to be 41 and 41, which some people want. I just like a season where you at least have like between like five to eight teams where you could see them conceivably get to the finals or win it all, and that's what I think we had this year. So in between the East and the West, I'd say that there was about six to seven teams that I could have seen getting to the finals or winning it all. So that's pretty cool. I thought it was cool that the Clippers got to game seven of the second round against Phoenix and nearly won. Uh, that would have been super cool to see. Basically, a pretty big underdog get to the conference finals. It would have been uh, just kind of unheard of. I think uh, Houston was a six seeding and won the title in 95. But besides that, I don't think anyone lower than a four seed's ever gotten to the uh the finals. I mean, I don't think that the Clippers necessarily would have gotten to the finals, but it would have just been cool to see a lower seed going really far in the playoffs, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, let's see here. You saw the rise of a team like Chicago, who hadn't really been a playoff contender for the past couple of years. They made the playoffs for the first time in a while. Uh, same with Milwaukee. Uh, same with, um, let's see here. The Lakers, of course, as I previously mentioned, and uh, Memphis was a, basically a perennial playoff team at this point with Pau Gasol. They were always losing in the first round, it seemed like, but you still had them always making it, and they still had Pau Gasol, and that was a cool matchup to see him versus Dirk in the first round. Let's see here. As far as award winners, uh, most valuable player was Steve Nash, uh, the second of his back-to-back -back, uh, MVPs. Coach of the year was Avery Johnson for Dallas, and then you had Mike Miller as sixth man of the year. Chris Paul was rookie of the year. Ben Wallace, defensive player of the year. Um, pretty. Uh, let's see here. Coach. Oh, I, I mentioned coach of the year. All pretty, pretty normal stuff as far as like awards, and I think everyone knows the history of those awards pretty well. Kobe led the league in scoring with 35 points a game. Garnett led the NBA in rebounding with 13. Uh, Gerald Wallace led the league in steals at 2.5. Marcus Camby with 3.3 blocks per game, leading the league. Um, as far as the finals, 
going back to the playoffs really quick, that was a really interesting finals in that you had Dallas go up 2-0 and then the Heat rattle off four straight. Dwayne Wade uh, turning in a really great performance and Shaq and the rest of the team really being basically sidekicks where it's it's hard to think of Shaquille O'Neal as somebody's sidekick, but honestly, that's really what he was in that series. Um, and then Dallas basically just crumbling. A lot of people think that this was actually a rigged finals and that the NBA won the Heat to win. I don't really think that. I I don't know. I don't really think the NBA rigs like that. I think that there can be some, at times, unfair officiating, but I don't think that that was the case necessarily in 06. All that being said, I found this to be a really cool, really good NBA season where you had lots of good parody, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you tune in next time to learn about another cool season in NBA history. Have a good day. Bye.